Good news of the day. Jesus Christ died for our sins and he has given you eternal life. He loves you infinitely and wants you to join him in eternal life in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit. You're valuable and important to him and you have great worth in his eyes. If you're struggling or going through something difficult, you will get through it. You are strong. Jesus loves you and he is with you. He's ready to be accepted into your heart at any time. Ask for forgiveness for your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your savior and you will be saved. Please know how loved and special you are and how you're an irreplaceable child of God. Stay strong and take care of yourself. Quick spoiler warning, A is 2 story quest, in a zoom and archon quest, some details of Scaramouche's backstory and Scaramouche's archon story quest. I don't go into super detail about it, but just a few things are mentioned, so I didn't want to put it in the spoiler warning. Thanks, enjoy the vid. Disclaimers, any A lovers are going to be completely offended by this video, so best to just click off, go watch something that's not going to make you mad. And this video is brutal. I don't hold back. I was in a really bad mood when I made this. So anyone who is a sunshine enjoyer, just click off. And full disclosure, I am a Scaramouche slash Wanderer Sim. So thank you and enjoy the video. A is still awful. The Awakening. I'm back again. You would think that after making that one whole video about the Electro Bitch, I'd get it out of my system. But you know what? I'm back for more. I'm just a regular glutton for punishment. I just hate her. I hate her so much. I want her to literally drop dead. And I just thought that I would rant about it because one, I'm sick and I have nothing to do. And two, I'm just pissed off and I want a target for all that rage I feel bubbling in my chest cavity like a cauldron about to boil over. So I've never met a character as unlikable as A. Well, yeah, I comes pretty close, but she'll have her day in court. Just you wait. But I mean, it just floors me that the Genshin writers wrote a character that was so wicked, so unlikable, that the doctor, El Del Thore himself, is a more likable character than her. At least El Del Thore is fun to watch on screen. Like seeing him be evil, I'm like, oh, you crazy doctor, man, you. He's just so entertaining. But every time I ever see A's, funky, stanky ass. I just, I vomit from pure rage. What inspired me to do this video the most was like, I mentioned in one of my past videos that I took a break, like a hiatus from the Genshin community while Subaru was dropping till like about a week ago. Cause I was just tired of having everything spoiled for me, like the leaks and shit like that. I just genuinely wanted to be surprised for once and not have to worry about like going online for a few minutes and then having like the end of the Archon Quest spoiled for me or something. But recently, like, Scaramouche's Quest came out, and I completed it, and I loved it, by the way. And I was like, let me check out what the community's been up to. And, like, that's always a questionable decision, but whatever, that's what I did. And I found this whole weird subgenre of fan comics where, like, Scaramouche and A, like, they meet up, and they, like, make up, and, like, they range from, like, sweet to angsty, these comics. But I was just thinking about how fucking uncomfortable they made me because one, like those scenarios, they would just never, ever happen. Like A doesn't even see Scara as her kid and she doesn't give two shits about him. She never has and she probably never will. She doesn't feel as if she did anything wrong in regards to him or any wrong to him. And I could just never imagine her and him having any kind of positive relationship like whatsoever. Because I feel like he would at least need an apology or an explanation as to why she literally abandoned him as an infant. And any answer she gave would just further emotionally destroy him because she's literally not a good person. She just abandoned him because she saw him strictly as a tool for her own use and he didn't fit the standards that she had in mind. So honestly, since I can't imagine any relationship or meeting between them that doesn't hurt Scaramouche even worse, I think she should just stay the fuck away from him. Like all these comic artists who are drawing this, they are so high on copium that their favorite Electra waifu is a better person than she actually is because she's a monster. In my first video on A, I have a whole section on Scara, but now we know more about his backstory and life. And like, holy shit, I didn't go on her hard enough. A creates a sentient life form that knows nothing not even the fact that he's supposed to wear clothes he doesn't know how to cook fight he is literally the definition of complete innocence he's just an infant mentally even if his body most likely looked exactly the way it does now he was an actual baby and a knew he was sentient because he cried in his dreams and non-sentient beings don't cry period so there's no bullshit for her or her fans to like make excuses like Oh, maybe she didn't know Mushi was sentient when she abandoned him. No, she fucking did. 
And like literally for no other reason, she abandoned him for no other reason than the fact that he didn't fit her personal goals for him. She just abandoned him. She just threw him out. And you have to remember, he didn't ask to be born slash created. No child does. She chose to make him. And then she abandons him in Shake Pavilion without literally a shred of clothing to wear. It says specifically in Mushi's tiny doll story that humans from Tatarasuna taught him to wear clothes. So she literally left him there naked, like he was just some discarded object instead of the sentient person, the sentient person which she knew he was. Also, let's go over that, like where she actually abandoned him. Shaiki Pavilion, a fucking pavilion in the countryside with no one inside. What the actual fuck is wrong with her? If she didn't want to raise him because she's a cold-hearted bitch, which doesn't even make logical sense to me, by the way, because of A's whole thing is that she's awful and evil and cold because she lost her sister and her friends, then when she jumped jump at the fact to have like a new family member, but regardless, if she didn't want to raise him, fine, fine. The absolute least she could do is give him to a family that was willing to adopt him, maybe even one in the tri-commission, so that she could keep an eye on him from time to time, because Skara isn't just like any child. He's the Raiden Shogun's child, which makes him a target for nefarious actors, which I pointed out in the first video. It doesn't take a fucking genius to figure out that something is different about Mushi compared to other children. Plus, he fucking looks like the Raiden Shogun. Katsuragi, the kind samurai who found slash saved Mushi, which more on that later, had the wherewithal to tell Mushi to hide the golden feather that connected him to the Shogun and tell him to lie to protect himself from nefarious actors, which again, we'll get to, you know, I'm talking about you, Del El Del Toro, you, you know I am. But A didn't give him any warning, like not to tell people who he was or to expose himself as a puppet. She didn't even give him clothes to wear. Like, let me just emphasize that again. Women who abandon their swallowed up babies in front of fire stations or in hospital waiting rooms are infinitely morally superior to A because they're putting the child into safe care to someone better equipped to handle that child and keep them safe. But A just literally dumped Scarra in a pavilion in the woods. It would have cost her nothing, literally nothing, to give him to some of her subordinates and ask them to raise him. And if she was so disgusted by him, this literal baby that she chose to make, she could have instructed those subordinates to move to Yashiro Island and like raise him there where she wouldn't have to see him. At least then he'd have actual parents who could teach him about life and keep him safe from people who wished him harm and ill. I just don't know why she was so unbelievably cruel to him when it would have cost her nothing to be like minimally decent to a sentient being that she created. Also about the pavilion, yeah, the pavilion is a prison. Even if A didn't intend it as a prison, although with how like heartless and monstrous she is, I wouldn't doubt that was her intention. But she left a baby alone in a prison with no company, with no company. That's specifically how it's referred to in one of Scaramouche's companionship stories. It's described as a prison. And like, there's nobody in there. Like there's no one in the pavilion. And solitary confinement for adults is considered torture. So what the fuck would it do to an infant? Like, I'm just saying, the pavilion is described as a prison. And it says there that Scaramouche lost all perception of time inside. Like he was just fucking bored. And it's also described that when Katsuragi takes him out of there, it's described as a rescue. We have no idea as an audience how many years or decades that Scaramouche suffered inside by himself as an innocent baby before Katsuragi came and saved him. You could argue, well, A didn't lock the door, assumingly, since Katsuragi was able to just walk inside one day. So it's not a prison because Mushi could leave at any time. But he was an infant. How the fuck was he supposed to know he should or could even leave? The point is... It was just super wicked for her to leave a sentient being in this place that's completely isolated from other human beings or sentient beings, beings that can speak and communicate with him for years and years on end, or we have no idea how long. And remember, once again, it would have cost her literally nothing to just leave him like, I don't know, with other humans to raise him. So the elephant in the room, Del Torre, it's your time to shine so the people of Tar Tarsuna were kind to Mushi, but they didn't know like they needed to be careful to protect him from bad actors because most of them didn't even know he was any different than them. So El Torre sees them being nice to Mushi, and basically because the man has serious issues and he's a serious sicko, this pisses him off to conduct an experiment to basically see if he can turn Mushi evil, which he succeeds. He basically grooms Mushi. Have you ever thought about it that way? Not sexually, of course, but... You can grow and manipulate a young person other ways. The definition I found on Google 
said that grooming was the act of attempting to form a relationship with a child or young person with the intention of sexually assaulting them or inducing them to commit an illegal act such as selling drugs or joining a terrorist organization, which like a terrorist organization is pretty close to the Fatui. The point is, El Dottore set Mushi on this path towards the Fatui when he was very young and vulnerable and easy to manipulate and then took full advantage of this fact when the seeds that he laid came and birthed their vile fruits many years later. So Scarrow is basically El Dottore's willing test subjects for hundreds of years, and these experiments were basically torture. They're described as being very painful, and this Nahida says that they're very painful, and Mushi himself in one of the flashbacks we see in his kind of story arc on Quest, is he's, he makes the remark to D- D- El Dottore, um, which some paraphrasing here, basically, these won't be any worse than the others or the ones that came before, right? Which obviously implies that the past experience, like experiments were at least painful to some extent. And we also know that the knowledge that A abandoned Scara and was inadequate in her eyes, it weighs on his mind to this very day. Those emotional scars are deeply impressed onto him. And when it's raining, he says this. Fundamentally speaking, there's little difference between snow and rain, yet people lavish praise only upon the former. Fate can be truly arbitrary. So this line of his is a pretty obvious reference to him in the Raiden Shogun puppet that A would make to replace him after tossing him out like garbage. And this is just so depressing to hear. It basically, like, to this very day, even after everything that's happened, like around 500 years of life, this fact of his abandonment and the fact that she saw him as inadequate just still weighs on his mind. And that's just like, like the emotional scar she created on him lasts like much further than like the actual point of abandonment, obviously. And he also mentally refers to himself in his companionship story five as discarded D Tris. One second. Excuse me. Detritus. I looked up how to say it. Detritus. Detritus. I think it's detritus. But anyway, this basically means garbage or something that's discarded. The full line being traitor, hero, god, discarded, detritus. All these identities would cease to matter to one who leaped into the flux. Meaning that one of the identities that Scaramouche held throughout his life was a literal garbage That was how her decisions made him feel. In the same companionship story, we also learn that Scaramouche blames himself for being naive enough to be tricked by Del Torre. El Del Torre. Del Torre sounds weird when you don't add the L, but whatever. And in the quest, we know that he goes on to, you know, basically kill himself or he attempts to. He attempts to erase himself from existence. Like, I can't really see a more striking metaphor for a suicide attempt. Like, also the stuff he says, like, I wish I was never born at all. That is a very common thing for suicidal people to say or think. So yeah, like basically like A, abandoning him, like that was like the nexus point for like, or I don't know if that's the right word, but all of these horrible things happened and it eventually led to this point where her child is literally trying to kill himself. So, you know, yeah, she's really mother of the year here. And now that we know Scaramouche's like full backstory, being privy to all the details, it just really reveals how much like how monstrous A really is and how abandoning him, how awful that really was. I mean, we knew it was awful even then, but just all the details, like everything we learn, it makes it worse. She set into a motion, like she set in motion a life filled with unimaginable pain, suffering, hardship, all because she couldn't be bothered to give him to a normal Inazuman couple to be raised. She, in the end, is just responsible for so much of his agony that he went through because Children don't ask to be born. You create them without regard for their will. So it's your job to make sure that they're taken care of, not theirs. A's line about Scaramouche too is just so annoying. Like, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to interfere in his fate. You already did, dumb bitch, when you created him. Like, I can't, I can't. Like, leave him alone, set him free. It's such bullshit. She is so irresponsible, cold-hearted. Like, she doesn't think about anything but herself and her own desires. She really deserves what Singora got, okay? Mushi deserves and deserved so much better. And I honestly hope he never comes into contact with her because she does not deserve him. Also, I wanted to add one more thing before we move on from Scaramouche. 
It's um, the horrifying fact that have you ever wondered how he knows that he was like thrown away like worthless garbage? Because in his um, backstory flashback that we see through Hypatia's mind in the Sumer Archon Quest, he says that's his first betrayal. So he was very aware that he was abandoned or he later learned this. But I always wondered, how did he come to learn it? Because um, he never has actually met with A face to face. So I was like, how did he wake up in the pavilion and then know that? But like, then you realize the horrifying truth that maybe should have been obvious all along. He wasn't peacefully sleeping in the pavilion. It says right in his CP story that he was just like fucking staring at the ceiling, walking around. He lost all track of time, meaning he was awake during that time. He was fully aware of what was going on. And so the fact is that he was probably sentient and awake when she abandoned him there. Like he probably remembers her driving him there and then saying she's going to get milk metaphorically and then leaving him on the floor naked and then just leaving. She could have even told him to his face. Yep. You're a failure kid. You're no good. Um, so that's why I'm leaving you here. Bye. We have no idea, but like it is highly probable. In fact, I would say that it's almost canon, highly likely that Scaramouche was aware when the abandoning took place. He was not like peacefully sleeping or something. Oh no, I think he was, I think he was like aware of what was going on. And that just makes it so much more heartbreaking and horrifying. Like in my mind, it was so horrifying. I think I made it less horrifying. Like I was like, oh, he was probably asleep. And then when he woke up, he was there and he didn't know what happened. But like, no, because he knows that he was abandoned. I think it's highly likely that he was actually awake and aware when the abandoning took place. So like just another way that A is literally the worst, the worst person in, in Tabat. And you know, honestly, I would take all the Fatui Harbingers over her. Like if I had to pick, I would be like, those guys have definitely done more good stuff than A. Like I'm going to, I know that, I know they got the, the Elder Thorian there weighing them down, but like there's a lot of, they, they got some achievements. A, she needs to go to the Gulag. I, I literally hate her so much. Anyway, I wanted to say that before we move on to the next section. There you go. Moving on from Mushi altogether, although admittedly most of this video is about him since this act of A's has recently come into more clarity, I did want to just go over a few more of her crimes, like why I just literally despise this character like so much. I wanted to emphasize that all of the shitty things she did that she committed during the Vision Hunt degree still stand, stealing innocent people's visions, wiping chunks of their memory or driving them to insanity in some cases. Um, limiting people's movements like unlawfully or at least in a wrong way causing a civil war on her island and then just like not doing anything about it as soldiers loyal to her died knowingly allowing and failing to stop the Fatui's meddling in her lands and them spreading delusion amongst her populace like you know all this already we all know A is fucking horrible but I just wanted to emphasize that like all this bullshit that she did was simply because of her own desires and feelings, like no other reason. She just kind of felt like it, so she did it. And then at the end of the Ark Quest, she's just like, oh, I don't feel like it anymore, so she stops it. Like, she willingly puts her own ideals above, like, the well-being of her people. She says when we confront her in the last battle that, like, she promised her people an everlasting eternity, but none of the Inazuman playable characters nor NPCs that we meet actually, like, back up this claim that like this is what they wanted like almost every playable character we meet Ayaka, Ayato, Toma, Kokomi, Goro, Ito, Yoyamiya, Kazuha, and even fucking Sara whether they say it publicly or not they are all against the Vision Hunt degree they, they do not think it's the right thing to do and many of them straight out express this fact even through open rebellion or committing acts of like subterfuge basically against the government and the NPCs the ones who aren't actively suffering from having their vision stolen from them and the mental strain of that act they're, they're weary from war. They're missing their loved ones, missing their sons. They've been driven out of their homes by the war, or the war has caused them to have to leave their homes. The people who used to live on Yashiro Island being a great example of this. So, like, it doesn't seem like any of the people of Inazuma actually agree with A. Not even fucking Yai does. A isn't enacting these policies for the people, but rather just because she wants to and for her own emotional baggage, basically. Speaking of her emotional baggage, no Hoyaverse having a dead sister is not justification to oppress your people, make them live in fear of defying you, killing innocent men in duels, starting a civil war in your country, stealing innocent people's visions, causing them extreme memory loss, insanity, both. Yes, A had some friends die as well, but Hoyaverse, like, 
as my mentor and life coach, Rocket the Raccoon, once said, Oh, boo-hoo-hoo, my wife and child are dead. <gasps> oh, I don't care if it's me. Everybody's got dead people. It's no excuse to get everybody else dead along the way. I couldn't have said it better myself. Just because you've lost people in your life doesn't give you the excuse of being a monster to everyone else. It doesn't make you likable and it doesn't make you sympathetic. Everybody's got dead people. And some people, including your son, had it a lot worse off than you. Although Tori was chased out of his hometown with pitchforks when he was a child, that does not justify him experimenting on literal children. Bad things that happen to you are not excuses for you, and they don't make what you did any better, and having a sad backstory doesn't automatically make you redeemed. This just seems like common sense. I do not know why the writers fumble so hard when it comes to A's writing, when it seems like sometimes they can actually do competent writing, like in Scaramouche's quest, but I don't know, with her, they just, it just fucking sucks, okay? Like, if I was supposed to hate her, if she was written as a cold villain who we tried to stop and defeat, all the evil shit would just make her a better villain. But the game doesn't treat her that way. After the Inazuma Archon quest, she's just like our buddy now, and I just hate it so much. Her story quests were the perfect place to like properly redeem her. They could have used those story quests so much, so much better. But like having her visit people who'd lost their visions and returning the vision, seeing the damage that her, her selfish ideals inflicted on the populace, visiting the graves of soldiers who died in the war that she caused, reflecting on herself and becoming more selfless and kind and heroic. But no, the first story quest with A is basically a date. And the second one is her fighting her puppet and deciding to finally end the Sokoko degree, which is good, but like she caused that in the first place. Do you really get points for undoing your own actions? Like if Hitler just halfway through the Holocaust stopped, would people really be like, oh yeah, he's good now? I mean, for real, be serious. She's the worst. She's never apologized to the people of Inazuma, Scaramouche, or the people that suffered because of her shitty rule. She even deflects blame for all her horrid actions. I'm going to let you listen to this voice line that she says about Toma. I can't deny that I am somewhat culpable in the events that led to him being almost stripped of his vision. But I rather think the Shogun should be the one to extend a formal apology to him. Okay, fine. I'll give it some more thought. As you can see, she tries to deflect blame to her puppet, who she created and programmed. She's literally trying to blame her kid. She really is like the worst mother to ever live. Also, this is especially horrible when you remember that Toma, how he got his vision was basically he felt he could not abandon the Kamisato siblings in their hour of distress. So with his vision taken, he probably literally would have forgotten his two most important friends. Like just soak in how awful what almost happened to him, what almost was done to him truly is. Ace just awful and people liking her or trying to smoke copium and pretend like she would ever be a good mom to Scaramouche, it just makes me physically ill, okay? Like, obviously, they're free to like whatever character they like. It's just fictional characters. It ain't that serious. But I just, I, I just hate her so much. And I'm definitely not the only one who thinks that either. Since I have such a burning hatred for this fictional character, I compiled some lovely comments from fellow A haters online and I would just love to share these with you. I just totally agree with, I mean, she has destroyed so many people's lives. I mean, through the civil war that her, her vision hunt decree caused, she, I mean, she literally killed so many people. Like, they're never coming back. Their families are devastated forever. Like, that is never going to change. This one talks about how, yeah, like, if they were going to write her like this, they should have just kept her as an antagonist. If she was just super evil and stuff, but they had to make her all ooh-woo, which I definitely agree with. That was definitely for... I guess the people that were attracted to her, um, they wanted to make her all cutesy, which, like, fucking gag. She's literally awful. Like, how, how could you be attracted to her? Like, I'm not attracted to people that, like, don't have any virtue. I mean, I do have a thing for bad boys with, like, sad backstories. But, like, I don't know. I just think, like, they have to have some virtue, right? And I guess, like, I guess you could say, like, oh, if you put aside all the horrible things, like, she's strong. I don't fucking know. I have no idea what her appeal is other than like big boobs um and she's pretty but like come on we can do better than that um so this one is yeah just once again her trying to blame um the puppet the vessel um for being horrible and basically blaming her for the crimes this one here yeah it's just like 
I'm so glad I'm not the only one because like I just really hate her. Like it's been like a year since like the Nezu and Arkham Quest come out, but like I'm still seething. Um, yeah, she she never apologizes for any of the harm she did, but Genshin just like literally was like forget about that, and then most of the fandom is just totally cool with her, and that that like annoys me. So yeah, this one's just like obviously like she should apologize to everyone because she created it, but honestly like her apologies like aren't enough. Like let's just be real, but it would be a start at least. And you know. Like, yeah, there could be a ceremony where she covers the giant statue she built to, like, um, literally steal people's vision. And I really like this comment um, that they put, like, flowers to memory all those that are lost. Like, anything that's, like, you know, humbling herself and raising her people up would be really good, you know. You know, it, this person saying that, yeah, like, they could have written her, like, this awful if she was just going to be a villain, but then they turned around and we're like oh no she's cool now but she's not and so guys I found a little gem while I was um editing this video and I just thought if you didn't hate her already oh this will do it for you maybe I feel like if you didn't hate her you wouldn't have watched this far but anyway so like you know how like first of all she calls um Scara a byproduct which is great I'm sure he would love that so much that would definitely help his already extremely fucked up self-esteem but more than that she she says that if the shogun like the puppet she currently is um using if she gets hurt or damaged they can just replace her that they can just replace her even though the shogun puppet is sentient and this is proven without a doubt, even though it was already proven in the first quest, the first story quest of Ace, and the second one is especially, they duel, and in the end, the puppet agrees to become her shadow, or whatever, or the Kagamusha, or whatever, but A literally doesn't even see her as a person, just a tool. I don't know if her opinions ever changed on this, or it changed after that quest, but A never talks about this, like, and we don't know, like, her voice line didn't change, as far as I know, this, this, the recording I'm using was recorded over a year ago, but I do not think that they went in and changed it. So it's like, literally, she's the monster. She's just fucking horrible. I mean, like, these puppets she's making are sentient life. I also, so I just, like, I was floored. I was so floored. I was like, what the actual fuck? Like, no wonder Mushi has issues. And like, can the puppet please get away from her? Like, that poor other puppet. I hate that we don't have a name for that puppet. Unless, like, the name of the boss battle has a name. But it's, like, very complicated. So... I don't know. I'm going to call her Amy just because I feel like it. But like, I wish Amy would get the fuck away from A because A doesn't give a fuck about her. Like if she dies, A's just going to build a new one, which like, oh my gosh, stop creating sentient life, A. Like uh, she, you know, like how women who are irresponsible and they keep having babies, they get their tubes tied. A needs to get her tubes tied, but just, you know, she's not actually birthing these children. She's just making sentient puppets. So someone needs to take the puppet making equipment away from her because this is just so disturbing and wicked. Like if it couldn't get worse. And I was literally like, when Ryan daughter is a better mother than you, you need to actually get yourself checked out. And Ryan daughter fed one of her sentient children to a dragon who was also her sentient child. So like, I really wonder how Durin felt about being forced to his sibling. I mean, his sibling did live. Maybe that was Durin because Durin was actually like very kind. Anyway, Ryan daughter, she wasn't a great mom either, but like at least she raised the one Albedo. This one, she didn't do either. She abandoned Scaramouche in a fucking pavilion and we all know how that turned out. And then she literally, the child she kept, she only sees strictly as a tool that she can replace. Like it's a fucking chair or a sword. Oh, the sword breaks. We can just get a new one. I was just absolutely floored. And I just was like, I got it. I got to put this in somewhere. Like this is so fucking disturbing. And yeah. So Amy, that's what I've decided to call her. She needs to fucking leave because that woman is crazy. A needs to be dethroned. Like, I hope Amy kills her and takes over because holy shit, A ain't right. A, she just ain't right. She needs to go to like beyond Archon jail, like the Archon death penalty. Like, I cannot. Anyway, just thought I'd share that horribly disturbing fact with you. So, yep. Anyone who stands her, literally, I'm sorry, but I don't like you. Like, I don't like you. I will never like you. Literally, listen to that line again and tell me that you don't have a problem with that. I don't want to be around you. You're scary. You need to go to jail. Thanks. Bye. Pretty much, pretty much.
that that was the whole thing. So I'm I'm glad I'm not the only one who doesn't like her. It makes me feel validated, as they say. So anyway, rant over. A sucks. Stamushi. Bye.